This food forest is three years old and we just did a super heavy intervention. We heavily pruned everything, we dropped the organic matter, we're feeding the tree line with organic material to build the soil, we're making it more productive, we're optimizing the area, we're optimizing the life processes. That is what Centropic Agroforestry is all about. So enjoy this video, it's all about doing these interventions across the whole agroforestry area, the oldest areas, the newer areas, pruning techniques, organizing your material. Check it out, hope you enjoy, and see you very soon. I'm back in my food forest here in New Zealand. It's early spring, the fear of frost is pretty much gone. You can see there was some frost earlier this winter. The systems are recovering, new growth is happening, and it's time right now for some heavy pruning, resetting of the systems to waning moon, which means all the sap, all the blood from the trees is underground in the root systems. So when you prune, it has that energy to bounce back. These are the three-year-old systems. We're gonna heavily prune them and the trees around them. In the middle, where this was all Kaikuyu just three years ago, all in the middle was just Kaikuyu, and now there's none because we've changed the conditions, we've created the conditions for new species to emerge where Kaikuyu fades away in the shade. When we do this intervention, we're gonna bring all this material down, use it for the tree lines, but we're also gonna grow a crop of shade tolerant species in the understory. Where previously there was grass, we're gonna be growing food. That's the plan for the next few days. A lot of this is practical application from what I learned in Brazil. I can't wait to see how things turn out. I'm pumped, let's go. When we're doing these heavy interventions, the step-by-step -step process is you wanna start by pruning the highest canopy trees, but before you do any pruning at all, you wanna weed the systems, because when you're laying organic material down, you don't wanna be burying species that you don't want in the system. So if there are any little things here in the understory, in the tree lines in particular, that you don't want, take that opportunity before you start pruning and just remove them, so that when you start pruning, you can just throw the organic material and know that you're not gonna be burying species that you don't want in the system. So after we finish weeding, we're gonna be pruning the highest trees first, the tallest canopy species, and that's even looking beyond your system. You wanna look beyond your system. Here we have a banksia, right there. Big tall tree has an influence on the system because it's big, it's tall, it's in this space before any of the system was planted. So we're gonna prune that tree, we're gonna prune a bit of this avocado that's behind us here. We're gonna prune all the surrounding trees because that's gonna really help, A, with the resetting of the growth hormones in the soil and in the air, but it's also gonna give us a lot of organic material to use in the intervention, in the reset of the system. So organic material, growth hormone, getting everyone on the same page, and eventually it kind of incorporates everyone. Rather than the system being isolated and separate separate from the other vegetation, it incorporates everything, and everything kind of begins to turn into the same system. So this is a 100-year-old plum tree, doing a big reset during the waning moon. All the sap is in the roots. We're gonna do a big reset and use all this organic material, all the growth hormone in the soil and the air. All of this is gonna benefit the agroforestry system and all the plants around by managing Let's do some management. Been doing interventions for the last few days. Big pruning, got a pile of organic matter down there. Now we're about to get ready to start doing heavy pruning. We didn't do the heavy pruning within the system yet because it's nice to be working in the shade and we've been organizing all the organic material from the tall trees that we pruned, the plum, the banksia. So now we're finally at the stage where we're nearly ready to start pruning the inside of the system, mostly support species. You can see a lot of stagnant Mexican sunflower that's been holding things down over winter. So agroforestry is looking good. Let's get pruning. Managing vines in an agroforestry system can sometimes be tricky if the system isn't designed for the vines. You can see I had an acacia right here and originally the vine was climbing over it. But because acacias need sun and the vine just took over really quickly in one season, 
it killed the acacia because the acacia is an early pioneer so it needs a lot of sunlight the vine took over boom acacia dead but i'm still keeping it around as a structure but it doesn't make the vine any less difficult to manage in an agroforestry system where it's high diversity the target crop isn't the passion fruit if i wanted to do commercial passion fruit in agroforestry it would really want to be a system designed specifically for the vines here i have them dotted around definitely an interesting management consideration for the vines here we've got a loquat that was planted from seed, and I've just cut a lot of the leaves up because they cast heavy shade. The leaves are really large and dense, and they cast a lot of heavy shade, and so I want to open up sunlight to the guava right here, or whatever else is in the understory. There's a cherimoya, there's a macadamia, so I use the loquats because they grow really easily from seed, because they just are super vigorous, they can take a prune. I use them everywhere, and I use them primarily for organic material, but also for fruit, fast growing, chop and drop, but also edible species. So that's why I'm cutting all the leaves up off the loquat. So I've got Monstera in the understory of this agroforestry system. It makes a beautiful fruit. It's kind of actually a vine, so long term it'll climb up trees. Great organic material, it breaks down really slowly, and so I've just cut the oldest leaves off. I'll maybe leave the two most recent leaves, allowing some sunlight in to the species down below, and then using the leaves as organic material. I just brought the mother plant of this banana down before it even fruited because when you're planting an agroforestry system with bananas and trees, you wanna get sunlight to your trees. Otherwise, the banana is very extroverted. It'll take the space and take a lot of light from your trees. So taking the first stem of the bananas out, you can see I've just cut the mother plant out right there. And that's gonna give a lot of sunlight right here to our lucuma. All right, the lucuma wants a little bit more sunlight. This is growing, but it could use a lot more sun. And so taking the mother plant out of the banana gives lots of sunlight to the lucuma and it's gonna let it grow a lot more this year than if I had kept the whole clump of bananas. Manage your bananas when they're in an agroforestry system. Organizing organic material to have the right layers in the tree lines. I want the bananas on top covering everything else. This really juicy stuff covering everything, making the whole package really inviting for the soil biology. So here we've got some yakon that was planted in the system initially. Quickly got shaded out and so it's been productive we're gonna remove it now and we're actually gonna maybe move it into the middle of the access ways which previously were grass and now more available to plant food because the grass has been because the conditions are changing so removing the yakon the Peruvian ground apple it's very traditional food very medicinal so we're taking these tree lucerne down to use them as organic material, cycling those nutrients, because the eucalypt is ready to take the tree looser in its place. Now we have all this organic material to feed to our young tree species. Right there. And this will decompose, it'll break down into nice earthworm friendly soil. And then we'll cover all this with less coarse material that came from the branches of that same tree. And the foliage will be on top, making a really nice inviting place for the earthworms, the fungi, just all the biological activity to feed these trees.
can see a whole succession of species right here. We have an acacia right there. We have a eucalyptus, a tree lucerne. And then in the understory, we have our blueberries. We've got a cherimoya. We've got a fig, a lucuma, raspberries, sugarcane, more sugarcane. And that's all in about one meter. I haven't moved on. There's a papaya right here. So that's all planted from the papaya over to the sugarcane is about a meter with that many species. You can see all the banana logs upside down, keeping the soil nice and moist on top of the more coarse material. There's more coarse material underneath those bananas. More species, more of that similar pattern, cherimoya, there's macadamia, guava, bananas obviously, more support trees. And everyone's been pruned up nice and beautifully. Midway through the really heavy pruning of this agroforestry system, you can see tons of organic material along the edges on the ground, been pruned out of the trees, dropping a lot of organic matter from the bananas, opening up light and space for our valuable seedlings. You can see right here, covered in banana logs, split underneath is organic material, and it's all organized from the most coarse material. So what we started with was the heavy pruning of the large banksia and the plum, all that really coarse material is on the very bottom. The more fine material, a lot of the branches from the prunings in the system, and then the finer material, the stuff that went through the wood chipper, and then on top, leaves, foliage, and then bananas holding everything down. You can see right here. Another example of that, we've got the bananas. We've got our long-term species, cherimoya, avocado, Japanese raisin tree, more cherimoya, macadamia. So it's all feeling very tidy. There's lots of fresh sunlight in here. Tons of organic material, these edges, these mounds of material on both sides of each of the tree lines. So if you're familiar with agroforestry strata, this might be interesting for you. So I used to think this meant 20% of all the canopy was in the emergent layer, 40% of all the canopy was in the high layer, and so on and so forth. If you're just looking at the emergent layer, you can see the eucalyptus, the acacia, you're just looking at that layer and wanting 20% of that particular layer to be occupied at 20% occupancy. Now, the thing to think about is, when do you prune? Do you prune when it's at 21% to bring it back down to 20%? Or do you prune when it's at 80%, which it was earlier before this intervention, do you let it get really, really overgrown and then prune it back to 20% or do you let it go to 25, 30%? So a lot of this has to do with management, but you can see the strata really clearly here. All the emergence, we've just done a really heavy intervention. There's still a few more things to do to plant some seedlings and to intercrop with some things in here, but all the pruning has been done. We've stratified to every, the, the emergent layers, the high canopy layers, the medium stuff, the citrus. Look at the citrus, just giving it a nice shape, open things up. We've put all the banana logs down. We just cut, I cut the mothers off of all the banana plants in here because yes, it's gonna make the banana fruit take longer to arrive, but we're getting the benefit of helping our trees because the trees want sunlight, especially these young things in the understory, whether it's the cherimoya, the macadamia, the avocados, these things want sunlight. By taking the bananas down, all that organic material on the ground, it's gonna keep things hydrated, it's gonna give a really nice boost of sunlight, growth hormone, so many benefits to taking that first succession of bananas down. Helps everything feel really open as well. Biggest reset that I've ever done, thanks to that courage that I grew in Brazil of tearing systems down. I feel like I've torn as much as I possibly could out of the system. I could maybe do a little bit more pruning, but it feels so good right now. Tons of organic material, beds of them on either side of the rows. The banana logs are just pretty much stacked. Below that, there's coarse, woody organic material. The plum, the eucalyptus, Mexican sunflowers. All the Mexican sunflowers that were here are humongous. Leveled them. I'm really excited how this intervention has turned out. It's taken about five days, starting with the very biggest trees on the outskirts of the periphery of the systems, pruning those, and then coming into the system after organizing some of that material. And then I started pruning the system with the emergence. All right, you start pruning the highest eucalyptus, the acacia, all to protect the young seedlings because we left the Mexican sunflower really shrubby. We left everything else to be protective in case those branches came down and crashed on our more high value species. So pruning from the periphery, high canopy down. And just today we we're doing some little bit of prune. I was pruning the citrus today and giving everything the last little touches, organizing material. So three year system intervention is complete. Still have some things to add. Recently today we've come through and we've pretty much executed about two thirds 
of our tree loose one. We've got one here, we've got one here. We're cycling these nutrients. The more trees you put in, the more trees you can quickly chop down in the first couple years. And so we've just pruned a ton of these trees, nutrients that were literally just pulled from the subsoil into the body and the leaves back on the top of the soil. We're feeding the metabolism, we're feeding the microbiology in the soil. Overplant your support trees, so you have to prune them aggressively in the first couple years. So you wanna cut at the elbows and the forks of any branch. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna just leave you with a bunch of straight pieces that lie really easily in contact with the soil. You don't want floating branches and funny elbows and twists because then it doesn't lay nice and compressed. You want everything in contact with the soil. So cut at the elbows and the forks, that's it. And then all your organic material lays beautifully in your access path or you can then rake it against your tree line. You want everything to be really compact. So forks and elbows, cut there. That's how you process organic material. So we just reset this one year old agroforestry system. You can see there's way more sunlight. The trees are pruned up. This is amazing. We used a lot of the material from this loquat to feed into these rows. Organism material woken up some of those young tree seedlings that are under there that have been kind of like huddled up for winter. They're ready for the sunlight. Now is the perfect time to be pruning with all the, all the moon phase and all this growth hormone. You can smell it. Looking good. Onto the new area. Be the windstorm. You have to be the windstorm in agroforestry because ordinarily there's big mammals and windstorms that tear trees down and create sunlight gaps for the seedlings to emerge. We have to be that windstorm if we want to accelerate the succession of our food forest. So what does that mean? Intentional pruning, very deliberate cuts. Opening these niches for specific longer term species, medium term successional species, papayas, bananas, avocados, cherimoy, they all have their specific life cycle and where they want to occupy in the timeline of your food forest. So, very exciting, it's been a really heavy prune. You can see everyone's happy, all the bananas are waking up after a colder winter than last year. It was frosted a lot more heavily this year here. So I got back from Brazil and everything was just roasted. It was so sad. I didn't really spend much time out here because nothing really needed to be done. But now that it's spring, everything wants to wake up. We're giving nature what she wants. We're being the windstorm with very precise cuts organizing the material. You can see that here. All of the material is organized on the edges of these tree lines. Big mounds, really thick layers in some spots using banana logs, using logs from trees that were cut down. And you can see everyone is very, very happy to receive a little bit of sunlight. The big spring reset of the agroforestry systems has been done. Everything has been pruned. I've added new shade tolerant crops to the middle between these tree lines. You can see I'm just adding another line here now between these tree lines. But all the interventions have been done both here in the established food forest areas and also in the newer areas that were planted last year. The areas that were done in a more spot planting and a patchwork methodology because it's interspersed through the established citrus trees which you can see right here. So with this tree lucerne right here you can see it's been fully cut back. This is one of the older areas, the first companion planting efforts that I made, a nitrogen fixing tree lucerne with a citrus that's done particularly well because of that, because of the constant every single year, twice a year, heavy pruning on the tree lucerne. I typically take about 98% of the canopy out. Lots of branches have been cut down. And all that organic material is laid to feed the citrus, to feed any other species that I've been incorporating in since then. Just the blood orange is doing particularly well. And that's what the reset looks like, whereas before it looked just so overgrown, you couldn't hardly see anything besides the tree lucerne there. We've got peaches, polonia, sugarcane, bananas, the Japanese raisin tree, more peaches, pine nuts, pomegranates, eucalyptus, olive, bananas. This whole area right here that I'm in just a year ago was citrus and grass, nothing else. And so all of this has been planted in between. We came in and spot planted. We used an auger and drilled holes for bananas. We cut a small trench in the center for areas of high density of seeds and seedlings. So they're all really packed together between the bananas and the established citrus. Some are fast to produce and some are a bit slower. And so that's the beauty of agroforestry is that sometimes you actually don't need to be as patient as you would ordinarily believe because something's fruit in two years and four years and then six years and by the time you're seven years in everything has just been super productive since day one that's the beauty of agroforestry 
Let's check out these rows that were just interplanted. This is something that I was inspired by from the Brazil trip, is adding shade tolerant species between my tree lines. So I had these established tree lines that were planted two and a half, three years ago. One tree line, two tree lines. And I believe this right here was the original tree line. You can see some old photos and footage of this. And now that things have established, the middle transitioned away from this really tenacious grass, Kaikuyu. It started transitioning, even after the first year, it started transitioning because the conditions changed. And as conditions change, the ecology, the plant life will change in response to that. And so instead of being really nasty Kaikuyu in here, it was slowly turning into more shade tolerant, lighter grasses. And it became really easy and inviting to plant a crop. So that's what we've done. We've planted a few different species, a selection of them, which that'll be its own video about how I've gone forward and moved the system into a more productive state after the heavy intervention, utilizing the sunlight, the shade, the organic material, the improved conditions. But for now, just know, the tree lines helped create the conditions where we can now be planting food where there previously was just grass. Here, what we've done is we've made a wooden log pathway using the material that we pruned from that big banksia tree, because that material has essentially been brought down by the windstorm. We are the windstorm. And then you want to organize the material to be of best service to your system as possible. We're reducing compaction when we walk, we're feeding organic material to the fungi. We're essentially imagining that a large tree has fallen down in the forest in this straight line, and then it's gonna decompose and feed whatever species are around it. Right, you've seen nurse logs before in old growth forests. Similar thing happens when a tree falls down, it's a very straight line, it decomposes, and suddenly that line is more fertile, it has more natural fertility than the surrounding areas. And so that's what we're modeling here. A tree has fallen down right alongside our tree line, and that tree is gonna be what feeds these especially slower growing species as this breaks down over the next two or three years. The species roots begin utilizing that improved soil biology, that improved soil condition. It'll be fantastic.